Welcome to your Pathway to Peace Bible class. My name is Carrie Rogers, and yes, friends, you know who's next to me, my lovely wife. Eileen Rogers. And yes, yes, class, we are so excited. Yes, delighted to be on the air with you today to share this powerful, life-changing word with you. That's the Holy Bible. You ready to get into the Word of God? Yes, of course. I know I'm ready to get into the Word of God. We're going to learn something today about a savior, mm -hmm. about someone who can change your life. God has changed my life, friend. This Bible has changed my life. And I guarantee you, as we guarantee every single class, it will change your life forever, friend. It will change it forever. Now, you know, friend, in recent years, we have experienced so many tragic events that have changed millions of people's lives throughout the world. Friend, you may have been directly affected by the same tra tragic events. Thousands of lives have been lost due to, due to hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and terrorism, bombings, tsunamis, and the list goes on and on and on and on. But in the midst of all these horrific events that have been happening in our world today, there are some amazing survivor stories, friends. There are some, some miracles out there. Let me give you one example. Now, do you remember September 11th? 2001. You remember that, Elaine? Mm -hmm. I think we all remember that day, that tragic day. But let me tell you about a young lady by the name of Janelle. Some of you have probably heard this miracle story before, but Janelle, she was actually on the 64th floor of the World Trade Center in New York when the terrorists hit the Twin Towers with those two infamous airline jets. Now, with the tail of the plane dangling from the 94th floor and fire raging 30 floors above, smoke began to creep in on Janelle's floor. Fearing danger and death, what Janelle did with others, she began to run quickly down the stairs to make her escape. She hustled down to the 40th floor. She then hustled down to the 30th floor. Then she hustled down to the 20th floor. And then she got to the 13th floor, anticipating her escape, seeing herself free from all this chaos. But then all of a sudden, friend, Janelle says that she heard a noise like, like a freight train coming closer and closer and louder and louder above her head. Can you imagine that, friend? Then all of a sudden, that freight train noise came upon her head with tons of, with tons of falling debris and, and clouds of dust, Janelle's floor actually gave away. She fell with the debris several stories down. Can you believe that? Mm. Until she found herself still alive. That's amazing. She mm. found herself still alive, friend, trapped by tons of concrete and twisted steel. Now, Janelle reaccounts this day, this dreadful day, and she says that she was all alone in the awful quiet and darkness. And friend, are you all alone in the awful quiet and darkness right now? Mm. You have to do is all you need to do is pray. Janelle, that's what she did. She began to pray and call out to the almighty God to rescue her from this nightmare. In the grips of ground zero, total destruction, with debris of two collapsed world famous skyscrapers, skyscrapers reduced to rubble all around her 26 hours later, fading in and out of consciousness, Elaine. Hmm. Janelle just, she said she kept on praying when she came to consciousness. She prayed and prayed, but 26 hours later, she was rescued, still alive, by heroic 
New York firefighters. That's an amazing story. That's an amazing, amazing miracle. Amen. It's amazing how she was rescued from certain death. And it's a true story. She was going to die, That's but right. she was miraculously saved and rescued from certain death. That's right. In the midst of tragedy, mm -hmm. friend, in the midst of all this debris, you know, friends, the master of disaster, Satan and sin has literally devastated our planet leaving a pile of debris of pain, leaving a, a pile of heartache, leaving a pile of misery, tragedy, and death. And we all, and we all are victims in the grips of this ground zero, planet Earth. The debris of sin and death is all around us, friend. Many have no hope. The, the, the debris of sin is, is overwhelming, it's, it's crushing, but friends, there is hope, amen. There is hope because there is a successful search and rescue plan that is already in place. All you have to do is call out to the heroic rescuer, and that is Jesus Christ. And I, I guarantee you, friend, if you call out to him, he will rescue you. He will rescue you from the devastation of sin. Friends, do you want to be a survivor who is pulled from the debris of sin and pain? Well, again, get your holy textbooks, which are your holy Bibles. Study with us today, and you will learn how to be a true survivor from this sin-devastated earth, which is ground zero of this universe. Amen? Amen. I mean, this, this, this sounds good, doesn't it? It's a good study. This, this is going to be a good study, friends. So why don't you bow your heads with us right now? Mm -hmm. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to lead us in our study today. Remember, class, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. Eileen and I are only facilitators. So Eileen, open us up with prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to lead us in our study today. Dear most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we pray as we study this important topic that your Holy Spirit will give us an understanding. We thank you for loving us so much that you gave us an opportunity to be rescued. And we pray, Lord, that as we see what you have done for us, that we will love you more and that we will choose to serve you sincerely. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Elaine, for that prayer. Today's title of today's lesson is Search and Rescue at Ground Zero. Today, we are going to get a peek into Jesus' powerful plan to search and rescue you and me from ground zero, this sin-devastated planet Earth. And as we study, friend, together, we pray that you will personally witness and experience God's unyielding, unstoppable, and matchless love to save you from misery into perfect peace, from hopelessness to hope, from pain to joy, from sadness to happiness. Amen. Amen. That's our prayer. Now, 1 Timothy 2, 4 indicates that God wants to save all people. He wants to save all people and he wants them to come into the knowledge of his truth. Amen. Now, class, before we actually get deep into our study of God's search and rescue plan, we first must truly understand our inherited condition and what kind of fatal danger we are all in. See, if you don't understand your condition, you don't understand that you really need to be rescued. So we're gonna talk about our condition first. And also we're gonna look at why you and I need to be rescued. So let's go ahead, Elaine, and start that study. Why, what's our condition and why do we need to get rescued? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Romans 5.12, friends. Let's go to Romans 5.12. Elaine, read that for us, Romans 5.12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Is that clear, class? That's very clear. Sin is a part of all of us, inherited from our first parents, Adam and Eve. They passed on the disease of sin to all generations on this earth. We all, you hear me, class, we all are affected by sin. Mm -hmm. Romans, Romans 3.23 says that, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are all sinful. Now, what are the results of sin? Let's look at that. Let's look at Romans 6, 23. And we're just going to look at the first part there. Read that, Elaine. Romans 6, 23. What is the result of sin? 
for the wages of sin is death. Very clear. Mm -hmm. The wages of sin is what? Death. Death. Death, friend. Again, what's defined sin? Let's look at that. What defines sin? Well, according to 1 John 3, 4, sin is the disobedience of God's law. That's clear. This is not a fictitious book. This is real. So according to the Bible, we are all on death row waiting for death because we have all sinned. Mm -hmm. We all deserve eternal death. That's right, Carrie. And by this eternal death, this is a death that a person has no hope of ever living again. Okay. This is not, That's true. we're not talking about the death that Jesus referred to as a sleep in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Or, that's a death where Jesus said the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay. And if the dead in Christ are rising, that's not an eternal death. So right. that's not the death that we're referring to. This death is the payment or the wages of our Very sin. Good. Good. And it's good. a death that's eternal. It's perishing forever. And we all, rich or poor, young or old, must face, we would all be doomed to this eternal death if we weren't able to be rescued. That's right. That's right. I'm glad you brought that out because e death, eternal death, is our inherited condition. It is our fate if we are not rescued. So can't you agree, friend? From the Bible, we all need to be rescued. Mm -hmm. Amen. We all need to be rescued from a Savior. I know I need to be rescued. How about you? Rescued from sin. Rescued from sin. That's right. Rescued from sin. You know, Bible class, there is hope. There is hope for you and I to be saved from death row. Amen. And from the grips of ground zero. So let's go ahead and begin to take a peek into God's plan and promise to search and rescue you mm -hmm. from your sinful condition. We understand our condition now, but there is a way out. Amen. 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 So we're going to go ahead and look at that right now. Now, after our first parents, Adam and Eve, chose to sin against God, what was God's first promise to all humanity that gave Adam and Eve hope and gives us hope today? So we're going to look at this first promise that God gives us in Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15. Read that, Elaine. It says, and I will put enmity between thee, which is Satan, okay. and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. In summary here, class, God tells Satan as a result of his sinful decisions that he and all who choose to follow him will one day be totally destroyed. Did you get that in there? So basically what God is saying here was this was a death sentence for Satan. That's right. But at the same time, it's a promise for all of us that he will rescue us from eternal death. Amen. Isn't this a beautiful promise? God makes a promise here. Now, class, let's look at this promise to us in Genesis 3.15 just a little closer, okay? Now, in the first half of Genesis 3.15, God promises to put enmity which is hatred between Satan and the woman. Mm -hmm. And the woman here represents God's true church or people, according to 2 Corinthians 11, 2. Now, in the second half of Genesis 3, 15, the seed of Satan are those who reject God and follow Satan. Now, don't miss this class. And the seed of the woman is the Savior born from the woman, the church, who will fatally crush or bruise Satan's head. Mm -hmm. And that Savior is no one else but Jesus, but Jesus Christ. Christ. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, class, turn your Bibles to 1 John 3 8. Now, in 1 John 3 8, it summarizes here the promise of Genesis 3 15 beautifully. Eileen, what does that say? Okay, 1 John 3 8 says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God, and that Son of God is Jesus Christ, right. was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. There it is, class. Amen. And according to the Bible, Jesus fulfilled that promise at the cross mm -hmm. to bruise or crush Satan's head. Jesus sacrificed his life for us at the cross. He did it at the cross. He crushed Satan's head at the cross. It was totally fulfilled, class. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, as we read in the Bible, died on the cross and rose again so we can have life. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at more details of that, of that fact when we take this short break. So 
So we're going to go ahead and take a short break. And after our break, we're going to get a clear picture of the purpose of Jesus Christ. The reason why he gave us this rescuing plan to save us from eternal death. Friend, don't you want to know more about this, this rescuing plan? We understand our condition now. We are all sin sick mm -hmm. in the debris of sin. So let's go ahead, take a short break, come back and study more from the Word of God. We promise to be right back. Welcome back class. Let's go ahead and learn more from God's word of his search and rescue plan for all of us sinners to save us from devastation of sin at ground zero. And that of course is planet earth. Now in general, the promise of Genesis 3:15, in which we studied in the first half of our study today promises to destroy Satan. But what are some other promises of rescue that give us a clear picture of the purpose of Jesus Christ. We need to look at these promises. Matter of fact, there are so many promises in the world we can study today, but we only have a few minutes left. So let's just study a few. Okay. okay. Let's go to John 3, 16 and 17. This is a beautiful promise class for you and me. John, John 3, 16 and 17. Read Daddy Lee. And it's also a very familiar promise. Yes, it For is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. What a beautiful promise. You know, class, this passage of scripture is, an, is the essence of or the core of the plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. Let's look at another promise, and that is Romans 6, 23. Romans 6, 23. Let's read that in, in, in its entirety. Okay, I okay. read the first part. For the wages of sin is death, but, and mm. here's the promise. That's right. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And what's sin? Sin is disobedience of God's law. But the beautiful thing here is that but. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the but, we'll, we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. But, but Jesus came to die for us and we can have life through him. Amen. Amen. And we cannot forget that class. Jesus gives us life. Let's, let's look at another promise for you, friend. Let's look at Romans 519. Romans 519. How are we rescued from sin? Read Daddy Lee. For as by one man's disobedience, and that is Adam, Adam mm -hmm. right? Many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, and that is Jesus Christ, shall many be made righteous. Amen. 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 Now, from all the passages of promises that we just read, who is the focal point here? It's very clear. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He mm -hmm. is the focal point. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, Elaine, look at Matthew 121. What does it say? What, what's it, what does it mention in Matthew 121? It says that his purpose is to save us from our sinful condition. That was the purpose that he came. That's right. It's, it's very simple. It is a simple plan that we can all buy into. Yes, Jesus is our rescuer friend. Mm -hmm. He will deliver us from the penalty of sin, which is eternal death. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good news class? That is the good news of the gospel. Amen. Jesus came to save you. You don't have to wait to be rescued. Jesus is ready to rescue you right now. Amen. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It will not cost you any money, friend. It won't cost you any money. Mm -hmm. It is free. It's a free gift. There are no fees. Mm -hmm. There are no hidden charges. It's not like a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> There's no hidden charges. And yes, there is most definitely help from all our dreadful conditions, friend, and that mm -hmm. is sin. Only if we choose the gift, the gift of God who gives us eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God loves us, friend, and he has provided a means to deliver you from the penalty of sin through Jesus Christ. So if you feel all broken right now, just praise the Lord because Jesus is here to rescue you. Now, now we need to answer this question. How does Jesus Christ deliver us from the penalty of sin? How is this done? So let's go ahead class and contemplate this on, contemplate on this particular question just for a moment, okay? 
How do we receive this eternal gift, this eternal gift of life from Jesus Christ? Let's go to Hebrews 2 and look at verses 14 through 15. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. And this is speaking of Jesus. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself, that's Jesus, mm -hmm. likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, Amen. that is the devil, and deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, was sent from heaven and became human like you and I. But what does death do for us? What does it do for us? What does this text say? Well, his death gives us the victory. Yes. It gives us power That's right. over death. That's right. It destroys Satan. That's right. And gives us the victory. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, it gives us so much hope, friend. Mm -hmm. You have victory through Jesus Christ. Now let's look at in more let's look at this in more detail. What does the death of Jesus do for you and me, friend? What does it do for you? Let's look at Romans 3.23. What does it say? It says what? The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. Death. So in other words, if you or I disobey God's law, the payment of sin, the disobedience of sin is eternal death. And we kind of talked about that in detail earlier, is eternal death. If you sin, you will die. eventually die in eternal death mm -hmm. if you don't have Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And to add to that, James chapter 1, verse 15 says that sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Death, that's right. And class, you need to understand this. None of us can take on death and live. None of us. Mm -mm. That's why we need a Savior. That's why we need Jesus Christ, because He is God. He is Emmanuel, God with us. So only He can handle death, because He is life. God is immortal. That's why we need Him. Mm -hmm. We need him and he has provided a way for escape for our condition. And that is the death of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's go ahead and read Hebrews 9.22. Hebrews 9.22. It says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or payment or relief from eternal death. Amen. That is what Jesus' death on the cross did for us, friend. When he spilt his blood on the cross, his, his blood relieved us from sin. It, it, it justified us. Amen. It mm -hmm. was the payment for sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. So because it, it had to be paid. Someone had, had to pay Someone the price, had to pay it. And we couldn't. That's right. Someone had to pay it. And it was Jesus who paid the price. Now, friend, let me ask you this question. Is there salvation in any other thing or any other person? Hmm. Let's look at this real quickly before we run out of time, Elaine. <laughs> Let's look at this. Let's look at Acts 4.12. That is Acts 4.12. What does it say? And again, this is referring to Jesus because he's the essence of our salvation. That's right. It says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Only Jesus can save you, friend. This text makes it clear. There's other texts in the Bible that makes it very clear. It's not through Buddha. Mm -mm. It's not through anybody else. It's not through your job. It's not through your car. It's not through your mother, your father. It's not through us. Only Jesus can save you. You can have all the money in the world. Your money can't save you, friend. <laughs> Only Jesus. And you must study this word. It's right here. The Bible is very clear. Now, what must you or I do in order to attain this gift of salvation? It is simple, class. But let's look at this particular, this this text here in Acts 2.38 as we continue, as we wrap up this particular study here. Acts 2.38, what does it say, Elaine? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's your first thing you need to do, friend, is repent. And repentance is an attitude, mm -hmm. an attitude of being sorry for your sin. Mm -hmm. And what is the next thing we need to do? Let's go to 1 John 1, 9. 
That is 1 John 1, 9. Read Daddy Lee. I like this promise. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. So we must repent and confess. Mm -hmm. And in that confession, we must be specific in our sin and our confession to God. Be specific in what sins you want cleansed from your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, after we have repented of our sins and confessed to God, we must believe it. Amen. Amen. We must believe that we are cleansed. Because what does Ephesians 2 8 say, Lean? It says, For by grace Amen. are ye saved through faith. Through faith. Mm -hmm. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen. So there's another gift. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, friend, you must have faith that God has heard your prayer. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, friend, that God has heard your prayer. Amen. It is God's grace through our active and genuine belief in God that saves us. And you must have the faith in God's word that he has cleansed you and forgiven you, amen. When God forgives you from your sins through Jesus Christ, you are cleansed from your sins. Romans 3:24 says that you are justified or made blameless as if you have never sinned. This is exciting, very exciting class. So like 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Behold, uh, we are a new creature. All things are made new. Amen. Amen. All things. In other words, God gives you the power to over your sinful habits, friends. Philippians 2.13 says, It is God that works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So all your desires will be Will, will only want to please God. You will only want to glorify God, not yourself, amen. If you have a hard time believing that, that promise, always remember Romans, always remember Philippians 4.13, which says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Remember, planet Earth is ground zero, mm -hmm. and the only survivors are those who accept God's plan of salvation and live for Jesus Christ. Jesus is holding his hand right now, friend. He is asking you. He wants to rescue you. All you have to do is reach out and grab it. He is right there. He is right there for you. He does not care what condition you're in, what position you hold, or how deep in sin you fell into. God is right there. He loves you, friend. He loves you. Well, friends, you know, the clock has got us again, and we have to go. There's so much more we could have studied on this subject. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure you stick around for the next program because we're going to be talking about, about this in more detail, about repentance, about confession, and about forgiveness. Mm. Jesus is there. He is there to get us out of this chaos. Amen. Amen. Let's accept the gift of salvation today. Amen. Amen. I think we have to go, Elaine. So <laughs> class, until next time, until next time on the same blessed station, may God bless you all. Please write to us at Pathway to Peace, Post Office Box 122, Wadesboro, North Carolina, 28170. Or email us at info at pathwaytopeace.net. Also, visit our website at pathwaytopeace.net.